Buongiorno, Vario Stick here. I just thought I'd go out for a bit of a wander. There's been a lot of fires here recently. Um, so I thought I'd come out and just look at the extent of the burning. It rained last night, so it's, uh, it's lost some of its blackness, but all over here, look, and all these hills around here, all burnt black. Right up almost as far as you can see. Um, all those fields have been burnt away. Unfortunately, it didn't get to the houses. I don't know if we, whether the camera picks them up, but there's, there's little hamlets and houses down here. Um, and the, the, the fire wasn't that far away and it burnt for several days. The big water planes, the water bombers come in and uh, with that and, and some hard work from the local firefighters. Um, sorry about the wind. The uh, local firefighters, they managed to put it out, but you can see all across there, right up into the hills, look, all black, all burnt. It just shows you how dry and hot it's been here recently. Record temperatures in Italy and the damage that, uh, that can be caused. Of course, when you get um, record temperatures, I think it was 48.8, which is nearly 150, which is, sorry, yeah, which is 50, which is nearly 120 in the old money. It's very, it's, it's little wonder why things burn. I've just come here. This is the Sonello River. I can hear a little bit of water trickling somewhere, but as you can see, it's just empty. It's all been overgrown. It's dried up. Most of the rivers in Italy dry up during the summer, or at least this part of Italy, dry up during the summer. You can probably just see the bed of it there. Um, so, so there's no moisture, there's no moisture in the ground. Uh, so things burn very quickly and very ferociously. But we had a lot of rain and some storms. Um, so I think most of the fires now have been put out but the fire people, you know, the fire brigades and the fire watchers and the people who fly the water bombers did a great job, really did, non-stop for quite a few weeks. So, a lot of burning, not just there, but the uh, hills behind us, the mountains behind us. Uh, yesterday, the water bombers were going right over the top of the house. It's, um, it's not a good situation, but we've had lots of storms, lots of rain, so hopefully, That'll, uh, that'll dampen things down for a while. 
but the weather again is decided to turn hot next week or the end of this week um, so the whole cycle might might start again as we can see they managed to stop it before you get to the hamlets which is uh, most important really because of course that's where people are actually living it's one thing burning the grass and the odd bit of straw and hay in a field but it's another thing if it's your house anyway we're back at the farmstead, so we'll go and see what Mr Bear's got to say about life. There's lots of figs as well, so we might harvest a few of them. Also, we've got some additions to our family here, and that's two uh, mouse exterminators who live in the garage. So let's go and have a look at them. Hello, Mr Bear. <laughs> Actually, you could do with a bit of a grooming, couldn't you? You're, um, don't slam the camera. Uh, yes, don't slam the camera, please don't. You, I'm gonna have to buy, you, gonna, you could do with a bit of a grooming, but at this time of year, oh yeah, this time of year, you do uh, you do tend to shed quite a bit, don't you, Mr. B? You're a good boy. <laughs> Gracious me! Look at all that hair coming out. It's terrifying. It's mainly what the the locals call uh, the white figs. They're actually white, really. They're kind of a, just a lime green, but the tree's full of them. Look there. Had a good crop this year, haven't we, Mr. B? You don't eat them, but um, geese and everybody else do. They're uh, very similar to the big brown figs, but um, they're not well, nowhere near as sticky. So uh, Mrs. Stick prefers them, and as you can see, so do the local ants, wasps, and hornets. So as soon as they're ripe, you've got to get in because if you don't, like this one up here, look. If you don't, they get eaten. So uh, me and Mr. Bear come out every morning and harvest our figs, don't we, Mr. Bear? Hmm? What are you sniffing there? I'm trodding something nice. But um, you just see, just pluck them off. They're uh, basically the same, though they look like inside, uh, but they're nowhere near as sticky. Um, how do you like them? They're all nice. The geese are as arsy as ever, but they're never going to be any different. Just don't turn your back on them for one second, because if you do, they'll have you. I'll meet you one of them figs, it's rather nice. <laughs> this particular bush is uh, brown figs, and as you can see, they're a whole lot different. They're also probably twice the size, that's not quite ready yet. I've got a few up there that are ready. Again, plenty this year, but again, You've got to be right on them, because if you're not, uh, the ants will be. Uh, I prefer these, don't you, Mr. B? I prefer these, which is good. That means Mrs. Stick won't eat them. This one's not quite as big as normal, but uh, again, you've got all that lovely flesh inside. Much sweeter um, than the, uh, the white figs. But they're all good and they're all coming into season for the second time. They usually have about three three lots a year from them and we've got lots of trees and bushes, so uh, got plenty to go at. <laughs> I think Mrs. Stick calls our male turkey Elvis, if memory serves. I don't try and give them names because you never know. You might be eating them for Christmas, but there we go. So this is Elvis and he's uh, quite an impressive creature. He doesn't half eat a lot, but then you'd expect that for something that's almost as big as a five-year-old child. Aren't we, Elvis? Huh? I like the colours on his head. Really handsome. So, Mr B, I think it's time for a bit of dinner. What do you reckon? You're going to have yours later on, but I'll rustle something up from the fridge. So, uh, show everybody your handsome side, hey? <laughs> and go make sure those foxes and wolves don't come anywhere near... Elvis, the um, the turkey, because we might want him for Christmas. Lots of videos on bear, but also on the breed. I do get asked questions on them. Do they make good house pets? Well, with hair that comes out like that, you don't really want something, <laughs> some, something that sheds like that in a house. Do we, Mr. Bear? Now, Mr. Bear wouldn't want to be in a house anyway. He doesn't like it. He doesn't go in a house. So he lives out here and he's more than happy. But just remember, if you're going to get out, but it's easy, you're going to get that at least two or three times a year. So I'm off to get some dinner. See you later, Mr. B. So 
The mouse exterminators. Here they are. Two little kittens. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the mother was run over. So they were orphaned. So Mrs. Stick uh, said, well, they can come and live with us. And they can get rid of the mice in the garage and in the barn. And to date, we haven't had any more mice um, in the barn. Uh, sorry, in the garage. So they're doing a really good job. They don't have eat a lot though. But it seems to have scared the mice off. We've had a couple of dead mice that they've had. So uh, that's good. Um, but I think once the mice realise these two are in situ, then generally speaking, they will depart. But they're doing a great job. Aren't you cat exterminators? Uh, mice exterminators. They do have names, uh, but I've absolutely no idea what they are. Um, that's uh, Mrs. Mrs. Stick's department. It's just an occupational hazard, really, of living in a hot, dry climate like we do. Um, but it is scary at the same time. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that and uh, the little bit of uh, footage on the new uh, mouse exterminators, the two cats. Uh, when Mrs. Stick comes back, she'll be able to tell me what their names are, but I can't remember. Uh, maybe she'll put it in the comments below. <laughs> also, thanks very much uh, for all your help and support. We've almost got to 1,000 subscribers. That's just absolutely amazing. I can't believe, I cannot believe that my little channel has done that. I know in general terms it's small fry, but it, it's just fantastic news. So I'd like to thank everybody, everybody for their support. If you're watching this channel and haven't subscribed, and I know a lot of people do watch it, but don't subscribe, just click that subscribe button. It really does help the channel uh, and the bell notification icons and the thumbs up, we like the video. It all helps. Uh, but again, thank you very much for, uh, for subscribing if you have done. Uh, and we're heading towards a thousand people. That's, that's absolutely amazing. So until next time, from here in the farmstead, Mr. Bear, the cats, um, I'd just like to say this is Vario Stick. <laughs> and ciao, ciao for now.